I'm introing. If you can go ahead, if you've not already, sign up for an OpenStreetMap account. I'll talk through those steps a little bit later. If you're like me and like to multitask while listening, this is a good thing to be multitasking. OpenStreetMap. Dot org. Thanks, everyone. My name is Jess Butler. I am the program director with OpenStreetMap US. And so I'm hosting one the session today, which is one of two. We'll be talking about open data, specifically around uh, mapping for mobility. This will be a really a hands-on session. I'm going to be sharing my screen and mapping for the whole time. The goal of this is really to get everyone here signed up for OpenStreetMap accounts and to start mapping. And specifically, what we'll be mapping today is pedestrian crossings, which are a really important data set that is often lacking. I'll talk about that a little bit more. Like I said, this is one of two. So you are welcome to attend one or both of the sessions. We're holding a second one tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern. My colleague, Steven, he'll be hosting that one. It'll essentially be the same as this. You'll just have another 90 minutes to practice mapping and uh, hear about OpenStreetMap a bit more. Like I said, uh, not too much on our agenda. I'll do a brief overview of what OpenStreetMap is and more about open mapping, and then we'll dive into things. So I'll do a live demo of what we're We'll be doing. I'm not one to rely on slides to teach you. I'll walk everyone through what we're doing live. Let's start with getting everyone OpenStreetMap accounts. If you haven't already, like I said, please go to OpenStreetMap.org. And when you get to OpenStreetMap, you'll probably see a map that looks like this. It's a pretty simple interface. This is the map interface that you'll be working with. There's Plenty of data that sits right here. Actually, one of the cool things about OpenStreetMap is there are so many data, data layers that you don't see. Really what's what's important right now is just to sign up. So go to this upper right-hand corner for sign up. Fill in some information. I'm sure everyone here is used to signing up and getting usernames and all of that. You will need to go to your email and confirm your account. Please make sure that you're using an email that you have access to right now, and you'll want to remember, obviously, your password and email to log back in in a few minutes. While you're signing up, hopefully we can all multitask. I'll actually explain what OpenStreetMap is and talk about that a little bit more. OpenStreetMap, some of you may have already heard of it. You may use it. Regardless, if you've heard of OpenStreetMap before, you've probably used the data or read map data from OpenStreetMap in one way or another. OpenStreetMap is a crowdsourced map of the world. It is freely editable. Anyone, anywhere can add data to OpenStreetMap. We like to describe it as the Wikipedia of maps. Anyone can add information to the map and it's publicly available. It's become a very valuable source of data around the world used by all sorts of organizations, companies, governments. OpenStreetMap data is used, like I said, by governments, the United Nations and their agencies, companies like Facebook, Amazon, AWS, and Microsoft all rely on OpenStreetMap data. And it's really the power of this data being free, editable, and anyone can contribute to it. Instead of relying on data that's behind a paywall or controlled by one entity, instead, we're all working together around the world to create one complete and up-to-date database. That's what we'll be uh, working on together today, working on adding data directly to OpenStreetMap. So one thing that's really cool about OpenStreetMap is when you're working on it and you're editing it, it's going straight into the database. Just if you've ever edited Wikipedia, you're putting the data right out there into the world. I mentioned that I am the program director with OpenStreetMap US. So a little bit about us. So OpenStreetMap US is a chapter of the OpenStreetMap Foundation, uh, which is the body that supports the servers, the infrastructure, and helps grow community uh, communities around the world that are contributing to OpenStreetMap. Really, nobody owns OpenStreetMap. It's not one, one organization or entity. We organize it as communities around the world to contribute data. And so OpenStreetMap, like I said, is a 
um, chapter of the OpenStreetMap Foundation. We are also a nonprofit here in the U.S. And so our goal is to build and support the community of mappers and contributors here in the U.S. and to work on spreading advocacy like this event today, help people understand and join the fun of contributing to OpenStreetMap and really just help it have continuous growth and contribution to the data here in the U.S. Today, we're going to be focusing on mapping pedestrian crossings specifically. So I can talk through the importance of mapping for mobility a bit more later on, mapping for ma OpenStreetMap data for uh, mobility and accessibility is really important. Um, I link to the blog here. It provides a really good overview of different ways that you can contribute in different organizations that are using OpenStreetMap for mobility and accessibility. Essentially what it boils down to is data in OSM on sidewalks, curb cuts, crossings, and other accessibility features are really critical to those that are reliant on this data to navigate our cities. For example, if you are a wheelchair user, having an understanding of how to navigate uh, New York City or Seattle in a safe way, having knowing where curb cuts are and other features is really important. Oftentimes that data is under mapped or not as accessible through our traditional navigational applications and other routing systems. Organizations, groups like Open Sidewalks and the Taskar Center are just two examples. Uh, they are using OpenStreetMap data to improve this gap. Building applications and other services that rely on OpenStreetMap data to improve uh, accessibility and navigation. Uh, and so that's what we'll be working on today. We'll do a bit of mapping crossings. I'll give you um, a live demo of what this looks like. This is just a quick example of what we'll be mapping today. Okay, so I'm gonna assume that everyone is signed up for OpenStreetMap accounts. If you get behind, that's no problem. I'm just going to yeah, dive into the actual component of mapping. Once you've signed up, go to OpenStreetMap, back to the main screen and log in. Just as a quick demo, you don't have to do this next part. I just wanted to give you a sense of how editing and mapping works in OpenStreetMap. We'll use a tool called ID Editor. Like I said, I'll talk you through all of this. This is actually a perfect example right here. What we're going to be mapping today are these crossings, um, these marked crosswalks and the curves. It's really important when we're mapping pedestrian infrastructure and pedestrian networks to start with the crosswalks. One thing that has been a challenge for groups that rely on this information, especially these crossings, are there, is there tactile paving at a crosswalk? Is there a just a curb drop or is it a lowered curb? Information like that, that's often lacking. And so when we are mapping the pedestrian networks for these organizations and for these data users, we highly encourage mapping the crossings first. It's really easy and tempting, and I know this as someone who's done this myself, it's really tempting to just map and start with the, the sidewalks, getting those crosswalks on the map are actually the most critical thing to do. I'll talk through how to do that real quick. Please don't worry about fault of doing this on your own yet, but we'll get to that point in a little bit. What I'm gonna do, so we're in one of the main editors for OpenStreetMap, we call it ID Editor, and it operates straight in your browser. And it's pretty simple. We're going to choose the type of data feature that we're going to add to the map. In this case, it's going to be pretty much just lines that we're adding. There's also another critical import, a critical part of mapping, and that's what we call tagging. And so that's how we differentiate a road from a sidewalk or a building from a park. So we'll just add an additional level of information that provides the attribute information, that additional data layer on what we're mapping. And we're doing this all against aerial imagery that you can see in the background here. If this is the crosswalk I'm coming up to and going to be editing in OpenStreetMap, I'm gonna come here to this line option and I'll go to the edge of this crosswalk. You can actually see from this imagery, you can see the tactile paving markers. And so I'm just going to click once 
where that crosswalk starts. I'm going to click again on the street where the road is, and then I'm going to click again on the other side of the crosswalk. So that's the basic function of creating, adding data to OpenStreetMap. A lot of what we're doing is just tracing imagery. There are other components to it. Like for example, I can straighten this line and then there's a few other steps here and I'll talk through this again, much, you know, much more in depth once we get to the stage that we're working on this together. Essentially what I want to do, I'm going to take this crossing this line here and I already have a few of these showing up. What I'll do is I'll click on this and where it says feature line, I'll be denoting it as a crosswalk. And specifically, I'm going to do it as a marked crosswalk. There's a few other steps involved. I'm going to hold it off here just because I want to give you a moment to take all that in. Also, if you guys have any questions, I dove into that really fast. Like I said, we're going to be actually going through a separate platform. So I don't want to get too in the weeds of how we are mapping the crosswalks yet. This was just meant to show you the overview of how we'll be mapping and how you're contributing data. Any questions, feel free to drop in the chat or even come off mute if you have any questions. I uh, either let those roll in or assume that you guys are all on track. I'm gonna jump back here a bit. I had started to map directly into OpenStreetMap which anyone is able to do. You can edit data directly from OpenStreetMap. I highly recommend that when you're done with this session today, that you take a minute, explore OpenStreetMap, maybe see if your house is on the map or your local grocery store. There's, it's really fun just to explore, especially areas that you know and see what's missing from OpenStreetMap. And just know that when you're contributing to that, it's helping the the whole database become more complete. We're going to, like I said, we're actually going to be mapping through a different platform called the Tasking Manager. And I'll drop that in the chat here as well. Also feel free to navigate from what's on the screen there. Once you get to the Tasking Manager, just a real quick overview of what this is and how it's used. A Tasking Manager, is just uh, a tool that we use in the OpenStreetMap community to help organize our efforts. The tasking manager allows us to say, hey, we want to map pedestrian crossings in New York, and I can set up a project and work on that. This, the tasking manager was originally developed to respond to humanitarian crises and disasters where hundreds, if not thousands of volunteers wanted to contribute and add data um, to help first responders, emergency responders. With any open contribution system, having hundreds or thousands of people editing one database at the same time can get messy. So the tasking manager was created to, to organize that and control that. I'll walk you all through what that looks like. Again, don't, while well, you can feel free to navigate to the tasking manager, feel free just to hold off on mapping. I'm going to walk you through it and explain how things work. When you get here, what we'll end up doing is exploring projects. And this one, these are all of the different active projects that communities and organizations around the world are using on the TeachOSM tasking manager. So these are different projects. I'll look for one that might be good to showcase. Here we go. This is a great one. This is not the one we'll be working on. I just wanted to show you what this looks like. So an organization is in need of map data in Sierra Leone to help with access to reliable electricity and power. They've set up a project here to map those buildings and organize volunteers. This odd shape here is the area in Sierra Leone that this organization needs data for. And each of these squares is an individual square, a task where one mapper can work. So this is what I was talking about organizing contributors and volunteers. We'll be doing the same thing in New York. So I'm going to go back to explore projects and you can do this one of two ways. I have a, a project task on those slides that's listed. Otherwise, you can also zoom into the location. So I'm, I'm zooming in on New York and the project that we're going to be working on is number 1389. You're welcome to navigate there. Ask you to not 
start mapping yet, feel free to look for the task. You're also welcome to see what other projects, other organizations and groups are working on while I talk through this. I'm also going to drop the direct link into the chat here in case that's helpful for anyone. Like I said, the project that we're focusing on today is pedestrian crossings, specifically in Canarsie in New York City. Is, is anyone calling in from Canarsie by chance? I have to admit, I've never been there. <laughs> Someone else from our team selected this area. I went to high school pretty close to there. I think I know where you, you are. Awesome. And once we dive in, you're welcome to look around. You'll probably recognize some things on the map too. It's always super fun to map where you're, where you're from at some point or another. So I highly recommend mapping your area or looking into it. Um, once we're done with this call today. And thank you, Maggie. If you want to drop in the chat where everyone's calling in from today, it would be really nice to see. Okay, back to how Haji is a tasking manager and how we're going to map through the tasking manager. We have a short description here on what we're going to be doing today. This is open to anyone. It's not just those of you who are today. You're also welcome to hold on to this link after the call and continue mapping afterwards. So this project is open to the public. I um, highly recommend if you do continue mapping through Tasking Manager or any other organized projects in OpenStreetMap, please definitely take the time to read through the description because that can provide some really critical information on not just who needs the data and who is going to be using it. Sometimes there's really important information on specifically how the data needs to be mapped or they might be asking for more advanced users or specific mappers to be contributing. Not super important for this project. Just wanted to make sure to note that it's always really important to read through the project descriptions and it helps give you a sense of what you're contributing to. So as we saw with that Sierra Leone project, we once again have a bit of a funky shape here. I actually took the neighborhood boundaries of Canarsie to create this. And so that's what you're looking at today. We took those boundaries divided up into a grid. And what we'll be doing as a group here today is we'll each be selecting one of those squares and you'll be working on completing all the map data for that square before uploading to OpenStreetMap and before opening that up to anyone else who wants to contribute. Essentially, once you select a square, no one else from this group will be able to work on it. You'll just be the one focusing on that. Another uh, benefit of working through the Tasking Manager, as I mentioned before, the data that you are adding to OpenStreetMap is going directly into a live database. There's, when contributing in most ways, there's no hold on the data and there's not really one oversight of that data before it goes into the live database. However, don't worry, <laughs> we will be checking and reviewing any of the data that you add today, definitely don't be afraid to contribute to this live database by mapping through the tasking manager here. It actually allows us to go back and check all of that data in a systematic way. So once you're done mapping a square, I or anyone else from our team or another volunteer can go back, select that square and check on that data. There is through this platform, that benefit of getting your data checked and making sure that things you're doing or you're, the things that you're mapping are um, done correctly. So definitely don't be afraid to make mistakes. We'll be right here and we'll be reviewing things to make sure that the data going in is, is good. Okay, from here, I'll hit contribute. And here on the left-hand side, this is always the most important thing to read on any project. I'll be going through all of this step-by-step -step on how to map specifically for today's project. I did a tiny bit of a demo earlier, not as in detail as ultimately we need from this. These instructions, they'll, on the contribution screen, they'll be there for you to reference. Good to take a look at and understand what we're going to be mapping. Essentially, it boils down to we're mapping curbs and we're mapping the crossings. And this is just a good reference. And like I said, if you come back, afterwards to help finish this project. This will be a nice reference for you. Also any project that you might contribute to later on, this is always something that's really good to, to watch out for. Ooh, so I see a bunch of little locked icons. 
That's such a great demo. All of these squares, somebody, four, five people in our group have selected a square to contribute. Getting a little ahead, that's okay. This is a great example though of what this looks like when a bunch of people are contributing. I will not be able to select this square. In fact, I'm actually prompted to map another task. At this point, I, so again, I'm going to demo. I ask that you guys watch me map through a few crossings first. Unless you're super confident and you've done this before, you can definitely go ahead. So I'm going to select a square. You can select any of them. And so this is going to take me to the ID editor. This is what I was mapping in before. I had just gone through the main OpenStreetMap web page instead of the tasking manager. For the most part, everything is essentially the same. It's really important to note this pink box here, that is the boundary for that task you selected. And so when you're working today and any time through a tasking manager, you want to keep your edits within that box. Um, because if you start contributing outside of that box, there's a chance that you could be conflicting edits with someone else. If say I'm working on this box and I know my colleague Maggie is here, she's working on a box that's uh, to the right here and I start editing in that space, I could actually be conflicting with the work that she's doing. As we're going forward, like I said, try to stay within in that box. Okay, what I'm gonna do from this stage, just do a quick overview of what you're looking at, try to get a sense of things. We have the imagery here in the background, and then we also have some data that's already showing. And New York City is actually really well mapped compared to some places. And so you're going to see a lot of other data besides um, the crossing and curb data that we're adding today. We have some streets here, East 92nd, East 93rd, and some points here. These look like these are addresses. If you hover over any of these data points, you can actually see additional information off to the left here. So for example, I'm actually, looks like someone added a solar panel to OpenStreetMap. One thing I didn't mention at the top is one of the coolest things about OpenStreetMap is pretty much any type of data and any level of attribution can be added to OpenStreetMap. You're not just restricted to a handful of things such as roads and buildings. Just about anything and everything, if it exists in the physical world, it probably can be mapped. The solar panel is actually a really great example. And we also have here stop signs. Great examples of some of the smaller infrastructural details that can be added to OpenStreetMap. And specifically with the stop signs and the roads and the crossings that we're going to be adding today, those are really important, um, not just to um, exist in the map, specifically for navigation. I mentioned a lot of different companies and groups use OpenStreetMap. The data is heavily used by navigation applications and companies. Adding this navigational data is really important. I just seen the question in the chat, from Michael, is there any quality control in the data entered? So there is a few different layers here. There are tons and tons of applications that are used to monitor and check for quality. A lot of also companies that are spending a lot of time contributing to OpenStreetMap to ensure quality because they rely on the data. For the most part, this is community responsibility. So if you are an OpenStreetMap contributor and you're contributing regularly, keep an eye on your neighborhood, your local area, just to make sure that quality uh, is strong is really important. And so our, in general, the community does a lot of great work to monitor and make sure that the edits going into OpenStreetMap are of the highest quality. Like I said, there's a lot of tools that are automatically doing checks, or you can use for manual checks as well. It's really a team effort. And that comes from, if we're going to keep it an open contribution database, we have to have that community and team effort to keep that quality up. Hope that answers your question. Sorry, <laughs> going back to the task manager and how to use it. I'm gonna zoom in. Like I said, getting an assessment of your square once you first look at it is really important and just trying to see where you're going to be mapping. It depends on every, it's always different depending on what you're mapping. In this case, we are going to be mapping the pedestrian crossings across streets. So for the most part, we can expect those in the intersections. I'm going to zoom in. I'm doing that on my 
uh, mouse with the with the scroll, you can also do that with the buttons up here as well. I'm going to zoom in on this crosswalk, and we have one, two, three marked crossings. We're actually going to map all four. This one would be considered an unmarked crossing, and it's also important to have that in OpenStreetMap. You can also even see there is tactile paving, at least on this side, that helps indicate it is technically a crossing, it's just not marked with the white lines or the zebra crossings, as some people might call it. Like I said, I'm going to start with a line and I'm going to use do this crossing here first. I'm going to click on the edge of that crosswalk and it's instinctual to go all the way to the other side. First, what we want to do is actually click on that road first. And then when I get to the other side, I'm going to double click. And why it's important to have that line on the street crossing is it helps with navigation. That's going to help indicate to anyone using the road or the road data that there is a crossing there. It's also a quality issue or quality control with OpenStreetMap that those features that are crossing, that they have an intersection. So definitely important that, great question, what if there is no road line? I'm actually really interested where that might be. If there's no road line, I, I would say just go straight across. Theoretically, there should be Nerf pretty good with the road mapping, so I don't know if we'd come across that very often in this case. If that were to happen, the roads were to be mapped later on, the reverse would happen. They, if someone's drawing the road, they would come back and add that middle node or that middle point to the crossing. With those clicks, so what I have right now is a flashing red line, not required. One step that I'm going to do, and I'm going to try to keep doing for all of my edits, especially while I'm sharing, is I'm going to right click on the line. And you'll want to make sure that it's flashing red when you do that. And I'm going to come down here to straighten. It just makes it look nicer to have that nice straight crosswalk. As far as going where this line is located in the crossing, because you can tell it's not quite center, I'm doing it from the tactile paving to the tactile paving. It can be in the middle, it can be to the tactile pavings, whatever makes sense. It's not the end of the world. I have a straight line, but I still haven't tagged it. What I'm going to do is come up here to this feature type where it says line. I'm going to click on this. And like I said, it's going to automatically, as you start doing this, it'll start leaving your recent tags up here. Just in case you don't have that, I'm just typing crosswalk and you'll see that there's quite a few options. In this case, I'm going to select marked crosswalk because we can see it with the painting. And then I'm actually going to do the same thing to this node in the middle. I'm going to hit point and mark crosswalk. Again, that's telling the data, anyone who is only relying on road data, they still know that there's a crosswalk there. If they were to only download or only use the road data, they would still know that there is a crosswalk and how to navigate that. It is helpful to have it on both the line and on the node at the crossing. And then finally, the last thing here for this crosswalk, I'm going to select the nodes, those little points at each end. If you hold down shift, you can select both of them or you can do them one at a time. It really, um, it's up to you. I like doing them at the same time because it saves a few extra clicks. So again, I'm going to come here to the point and this time I'm going to select or type curb. If you are you from local knowledge or you have really good imagery or visual, you can provide even further details if it's a raised curb or a lowered curb. Again, all of these data points are really helpful, especially for those who have mobility challenges or need that accessibility information. One thing that's really critical to OpenStreetMap is we don't want to map what we don't know. Map what we see and don't assume anything further. In this case, I'm just going to have it as a general curve. I could see the tactile paving. You can see there's an option here. Totally optional if you guys uh, want to add the tactile paving. Since it's here, I'm, I'm going to add that in. And again, don't assume if you can't see it because maybe there's a tree in the way or something else. Um, always err on the most general information and not putting anything here. Because if someone's relying on knowing where tactile paving is, for those who have impaired sight or other um, reasons to rely on it, we don't want to give them false positives here. So that that is it with our curb. I know I talked a lot through that. I'll map the rest of these crossings just so that you can see. Right now, 
I do want to say we're just mapping the cross to happen later is we'll come back through with another project, another time, not today to map the actual sidewalk networks and connect them to these crossings. Like I said, we're just doing the crossings today to get those on the map. Those are really overlooked when it comes to pedestrian networks. Oftentimes it's just the sidewalks and not the details of crossings. We are always start there. I'm going to actually map the, uh, the unmarked crosswalk here. So I'm going to start from here across the middle. And now I can't see a tactile paving or any other indication on the side where the sidewalk or where this unmarked crossing ends. I'm just going to do common sense, best guess here. Clearly there is some assumptions that can be made this time after I straighten it. This time when I select the tagging, I'm not going to hit marked crosswalk. And here we go, unworked crossing. And do the same for the node in the middle. And a tip, you can select both this line and the point at the crossing at the same time and tag them both if that's easier for you. And then I'm going to tag counting the curves and the curb. And in this case, I'm not going to do the tactile painting for both of them. I'm going to click anywhere to deselect. I did see that this one had tactile paving. So I'm going to hit yes for that one. Like I said, this one, it might be there under the car. I can't see it in this imagery. So at this point, one thing that's really important is that we're actually uploading and saving our edits to OpenStreetMap. If you look up here in this corner, I have a save button. So I'll click on that. That 10 there is the number of edits that I've contributed. I would recommend saving and uploading every less than 20 edits. Just make sure that if something happens to your internet connection or your browser, or anything that you're not losing an hour's worth of work. When you hit save, it's going to automatically generate these hashtags. These are ways for us to track the data when we're looking back and seeing who contributed today. So if you're mapping on your own, you can add additional details like added buildings or added a grocery store. For now, I'll just leave this as it is and I'm going to hit upload. And one last thing while that uploads, if I were one, if I'm done with this task, say I zoom out, I think that I've completed everything. The last step that you would need to do is to answer this question on the right. Is this task completely mapped? If I determine it is, I would say yes. However, can you just stop mapping the square anytime? That's totally fine. You'll just hit no and then submit the task. That's what I'm going to do. If you haven't already, oh good, I see quite a few people working. If you haven't already, please dive in. Go ahead and select one of these squares to start working on. I'll, yes, I'll go through the save step again, Jerry. If you haven't started already, please go ahead and start doing that. And I'll keep mapping and talking through everything. You can see that actively and see that repetition. Real quick, I'm just going to see if I missed any questions. Well, I, I have a question. Uh, when the crosswalk is partially in your square and partially outside, what do you, what, what do you partially do something there? I'm, I'm so glad you asked. That comes up every single time. I'm always waiting for someone to ask that question. With working in your square, we operate under the rule of majority. So if 70% of the crosswalk is in your square, or if you're mapping something like a building, 70% of the building is in your square, map it. If it's less than that, go ahead and hopefully the person in the next square, they're also following that rule and they're going to be working on that. So you kind of just have to make a judgment call. If the majority of it's in your in your square, go ahead and map it. If it's 50-50, I always err on the side of mapping it. So it's better in that case to map it and someone has to come clean up that data later on than having one single crosswalk missing in the whole neighborhood, which is a lot harder to find than an error of two crossings. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and it looks like that was Victoria's question as well. That also tells me you guys are definitely into this if you're asking that question. Okay. I am back in another square. And one thing to know on the right hand side, you know, I'd mentioned those instructions. That's where you can see if you need to refer to anything again, that's what we have here. We did have this note about adding footways. I'm not worried about that today, especially since a lot of people here is it's their first, your first time mapping an open street map. I would say, let's just focus on those crossings and those curves. I'm going to do another assessment. So since it's a brand new square, looks like we have some crossings here, down here. We might take a look at that one a little bit closer in a sec. Okay. I'll do one crossing and then I'll review the save 
process again. And apologies, I went through that a bit fast. I'll just do one crossing and then show you. So have my crossing that I'm working on, do a line, come to the start here, click on that road for a node, and then end it at the other side. And maybe one thing I tried a few quick tips. Um, if you get to the end of your line and say, if you, so you can double click to end it. If for some reason you forgot to double click, which happens to me all the time, you can also just hit escape on your keyboard and that will that'll get rid of it so that you just have that line that you're working on. You also can use control Z or undo to back up any edits that, or any placements of nodes or lines that you may have made by mistake. You can always undo those, no big deal. I have my line, I'm gonna click and straighten it. If you get real fancy, there is a shortcut here as well to use X on your keyboard. I like using the, the right click menu in that case. I don't know, a little old fashioned like mapping. And I have my line, I've straightened it, and then I need to add the tag. I should mention in the slides I shared, I can share that again. I did have a little checklist. If you want to have that checklist on your screen as you're going through, it'll run you through what you need to do for every crossing. So I'm mapping my crossing. I'm actually going to hit shift and select the node as well. It's really easy to forget that node where the two lines crawl. It might be helpful to try to select both of them. That way you're only tagging one time. You know what? Actually won't let me do that. Okay. I guess you do need to do it separately. Usually it lets you. So marked crosswalk and I'm going to have to do it separately. So I have my line and my crossing as a marked crosswalk. I can do the same time as these curved. I'll mark as a curb. And I do see that handy little pink patch on both sides that shows the tactile paving. Now, this one actually has a great example of these trees in the way. When we're mapping, not on every place it's a crossing. This one definitely has a tactile to show it. Again, I'm going to just place it in the most common, log common sense logical place for where that would be under the tree. If it's slightly off, that's okay. There's a good chance someone will come back through. Maybe someone who's local, they can make those adjustments. Imagery also updates. So there might be some imagery where uh, the leaves are off the tree. It might be easier to hone in um, exactly where that crossing is. In this case, it's the importance of having the data exist is more important than if, it, if the point is off by a few centimeters or a couple feet. So I'm going to, this one doesn't have those lines. This one's going to be an unworked crossing. I'm going to do the same thing here. I see there's some new question. I'll get to that in just a sec. And add my curves. Once again, I can't see uh, what's under here. I don't know if there's a tactile paving marker. I do know there is one on this side. So I'm going to hit plus. And for those of you who wanted a review of the saving, so as you go through and you can do this as many times, as often as you want, is to save and upload. Recently, I've been sticking with this every 10 edits or tends to be every two crosswalks. You can make whatever pattern works best for you every time you finish an intersection or whatever works for you, just making sure that you're saving frequently. You'll come up to this button at the upper right of the map window. Like I said, comments are generated for you. So you don't need to touch or really do anything with that. There's this option down here that says, I would like someone to review my edits. If you were just mapping straight into OpenStreetMap, I would recommend selecting that. That highlights for someone in the community to come just make sure uh, that the work you've contributed is good, especially when you're starting out. Again, to that question about quality, this is just another way that we can help monitor that. Since we're working through a tasking manager though, that has that data validation process, you don't need to be worrying about that in this regard. So no matter what, any of the edits that you do through this project is going to be reviewed. Don't need to worry about it today, just know that it's there. And then I'll hit upload. And so I'll take a sec to get the changes up to OpenStreetMap. And then once that little dial goes away, you can keep mapping. Ooh, where it stops in the middle of a road median. That's a great question. Let me see if I can find one. If I come across one, I will let you know. I would say just do, if it stops at a median, do it on, I do basically two crosswalks between the side of the street and the median. And then again, 
from the median over to the other side of the street. I would definitely need to look up to confirm that's how it's officially supposed to be done. <laughs> I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, that's something I'll need to look up later just to confirm. That'll be something that I'll check when we're doing the validation in the second run through. For now, that's definitely how I would approach it. Because the median is likely going to be tagged as a slightly different feature or mapped in a separate way. Does that answer your question, Jen? I will try to, if I see one, I will see if you have new. Okay, let me see if I can. So I'm going to get out of this square. Like I said, you can get out of your square, leave it at any time, come back. To do so, I'm going to say no to the, is this task completely mapped? And then I'm going to hit submit task. And that opens it up to anyone else. Okay, see view app now. Okay, I'm surprised I found that so fast. I am not from New York. <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned that in the beginning. I'm actually calling in from Michigan. I think, there we go. That's see view. Let me select a square. That's one. No, this one might be long. I don't go with. Gotcha. Okay, I see what you're saying, Jen. This median here. Okay. What I would do in this case, and it might be a little bit complicated, and you're welcome to just do the crossings if you're more comfortable with that. What I would do is I would actually tag this part in the middle as a just a footway. If I'm going to be mapping this here, I'm going to map from one corner, touch that middle, and then an end here. And so I would map this. It would oops, straighten that out. Map this as I would a normal crosswalk, worked crossing, worked crossing. And then here, I'm going to do it slightly different. I'm going to draw a new line straight from the other side and connect with this one. But then I'm going to crosswalk. I'm just going to do a footpath for this one. And then will basically just indicate that for that short period of time, pedestrians are not on the roadway and they're not in a crosswalk marked or unmarked. And I've finished that off with the other end of the crosswalk. And I will come back for those curves. Don't worry if anyone is thinking about that. So I want to mark, do this as a marked crosswalk, marked crosswalk. And then here we're going to do those curves again. But I'm going to just see if I can select all these. They'll mark all of these as a curve. I would assume they're lowered just because I don't know specifically and I can't quite tell from imagery. I'm just going to mark them simply as curve. So that's definitely an option. If you don't want to deal with the whole complication, of doing the middle footway part, it's okay just to do these as two separate crossings and someone will come back through and connect them with the footway. Like I said, I'm definitely going to go after this call, go back and confirm that's the proper way to do it. That's why we have the like validation process. And also we have a great wiki that helps with all these mapping and tagging, like guidances. I'll share that a little bit later as well. It's, I think it's also linked in the instructions. Just know that no one mapper knows all of like all of the tagging, all of the uh, best ways to do things. We're all relying on wikis and become experts in some features over others. Hopefully that was helpful. Okay. Cherry or Sherry, sorry. Would you want to come on to the and share your screen? That's definitely possible. If not, I can navigate to your area as well. I can definitely try that. Okay, one second. Let me stop sharing. And then Carrie, could you help give Sherry that option? She should be able to know. Awesome. Feel free to share your screen and then we can talk through it. Well, I'm not sure if that's actually a pedestrian problem. The north to south, the northeast to southwest, across the parking lane and across the street there and the bike lane. <laughs> <laughs> that one's really complicated. I would worry. I wouldn't do a crossing across that one there. Just that's one of those situations where it might be better to have the local knowledge or visit in person and to see what's going on there. Again, we never want to, there's some, some common sense things that we can definitely map and make assumptions about. That's definitely a situation where I would err on the side of saying no crossing there. That can always be added later because we would want to, someone to get into a rough situation with that complicated crossing there. Thank you. That do does look pretty dangerous for pedestrians. I wouldn't want to put it in as a crossing. <laughs> Thank you. Definitely. Um, a big rule of thumb with mapping anytime is to put yourself in the position of the data user. And so if you're never sure about something, just kind of think about how that data might be used. And if it's better to have it mapped and unsure or mapped or unmapped, um, sometimes, sometimes like that, it's better just to say you're not sure. One other thing that you can do in that regard, if you're ever unsure about something, when you, and if you want someone else during that second validation process, oh, I'm not sharing my screen one second. If you're 
unsure about something and you want someone to be taking a look at that, there's this comment section here. It's actually incredibly helpful. So if I were unsure, like I honestly in a little bit, this is the correct way to be mapping the medians. What I would do before submitting this task is just to leave a comment saying, unsure if I mapped the median correctly, or in your case, I'm unsure if the north-south crossing should be mapped. And so when someone comes back again through the tasking manager, they can get that second opinion and we'll take a look. And usually it's more advanced mappers who are doing that validation. They'll probably have more experience or they'll take the time. They know where the resources are to confirm that. Feel free to use that comment section to your advantage to leave those messages if you're unsure about anything. It's definitely helpful is someone on that validation end to know what to look for when we're looking at that. Okay. In this case, I'm going to, I'm just going to jump out at this one. When I'm running these mathathons, I like to, uh, I like to jump around. Definitely recommend staying in your square as much as possible. Oh, actually, here's a great thing. I always do this. I was ready to click the task was completely mapped. I can't hit submit because I didn't save. So luckily the tasking manager will prevent you from uh, leaving your task if you haven't saved yet. So I need to do, and then I'll hit upload. And so I'm actually, I am going to leave that comment and sure in a script where it's the map the median rule them up that task. Awesome. Actually, this is great. There's quite a few blue squares on this grid already. And that means that those squares are completed. You can see that in the, the legend here, those ones are fully mapped. You guys check those off. Uh, and it's ready for someone who's doing that second pass through that validation to come and take a look at. Another thing that might be helpful, coming across it less in this project, luckily, sometimes you'll select a square and there is no crosswalks or crossings in this square. So if you were to come across this or a similar project where you're wanting to map a specific feature and there's, does, there's none of them in that square, I'm actually, what you'll, what you'll want to do is just triple confirm that. This one's pretty, pretty simple because it's in the part. Is this task completely mapped? Yes. Even though there was nothing in it, it is completely mapped. We want to get that off the grid. You don't have a bunch of people looking at it a few times. And then I'll leave a comment that just says no crossings. And that's a nice, easy indication to a validator that they don't need to spend much time on it. So I'll submit that one. And now that one's done. And I'm going to select another one. And as you see, as you get going, um, especially if you're mapping just a single type of feature, can feel like a lot of instructions at first. Once you start getting the hang of it, it actually becomes a bit of more of a meditative calming activity. Oops. And if you are interested in doing more mapping, we actually have another event later tonight. The link is in the slides. We have twice a month, we have an event called a map along, and it's just an hour of getting together and practicing how to map. Um, my colleague from with TeachOSM, which I'll talk about, I realized I didn't talk about TeachOSM at the time. Just spent an hour answering questions about mapping, practice mapping. Today's International Women's Day. And so the task that is going to be mapped, actually, it's one of those Sierra Leone tasks that I mentioned earlier, mapping will be mapping buildings during that event. If you have some time later this evening, 8 p.m., you're welcome to join that. You're also welcome to just join the meetup group in general that's linked there just so that you can follow that and hear from more opportunities to practice mapping with our Teach OSM crew. Like I said, I forgot to mention, I forgot to talk too much about Teach OSM at the beginning. That is a program of OpenStreetMap US. It's our educational arm. We provide trainings on how to use OpenStreetMap. More specifically, we are through that program, connecting with educators and students all across the country on how to engage and use OpenStreetMap in the classroom, using OpenStreetMap as a learning learning tool for everything from uh, high school geography to social studies at, in the college level. So it's a great program that provides a lot of you know, resources to educators to use that data and to bring more civics education to, to the classroom. Okay. Hopefully I'm hitting all of my steps here as I'm talking. Usually I'm pretty good with the, uh, the multitasking. If anyone notices me missing a step, especially those tap file savings, you're welcome to chime in and call me out. That's also why we have that, that validation step here. 
Great question, Lori. I'm just seeing your question. In the park, like the one I was work walk mapping previously, I did say no crosswalks. You're totally right. There's inclines, declines, staircases. Those are really critical to accessibility mapping and understanding how someone navigates through space. Those are definitely things that we can and should be mapping. In this case, for this project, I'm only focusing on the crossings. So that's what we set up for the scope of this project. In most projects though, you have the brain and the flexibility to add those details as well though. If you do see a staircase that you think should be mapped, which is mapped as a line, definitely add that in. Again, that's, that's a great point that's really important for accessibility and navigation as well. If you want to be adventurous and map something that we are training on today for in that specific use case, feel free. We're just, for the specific project, we're just mapping crossings and anything else will come later. Really great question and really good point. I definitely encourage you um, after this to take time exploring both OpenStreetMap and some of the work on the tasking manager. Also share, we have other instances of the tasking manager in general. It's not just one site, it's the name for a more general tool. This one is just the Teach OSM version. There's others that have are used by organizations for other purposes. So for example, we are partnering with Kaboom. They're a an amazing national nonprofit that works to end place-based inequities. We're actually helping them with mapping playgrounds in various places right now in Colorado. There's also other initiatives, organizations that are using it for malaria or health and sanitation around the world. If you're interested in contributing, motivated by contributing to a good cause, I'm happy to share more information. Some of those projects are in the tasking manager. Um, happy to share those links for how to get involved in other ways. Actually, you all don't mind. I'm going to diverge for another minute. Speaking of those causes, the Open Street Map US has a program called Mapping for Impact. Um, that's where the work with Kaboom is also through. We're actually partnering with a nonprofit that is working in the New York City area. If you want to contribute to a local cause, Rising Tide Effect is a nonprofit that is working around access to swimming pools and helping with swimming and water safety with kids. We're actually working on mapping swimming pools in the New York area. This is a completely different tool than the task manager. Sorry to throw a, uh, another tool at you. I'm not going to go through this one in detail. I'll drop the link in the chat. If you have a swimming pool that you're familiar with or local to your area, adding details about like access and other information is actually going to be really helpful for this organization that's working on improving water safety and access in the New York area. I'll share that one. Apologies for uh, jumping away from the main project for a minute. I did want to make sure to share that as an option. So we'll drop that in the chat. Back here to mine. If you haven't saved in a while, uh, this is definitely a good time to do. My save button there is changing colors. Eventually it'll get, I think a bright red if you've gone too long. I'm gonna finish up with this intersection before I save. And if you are interested or wanna go out and map your neighborhood, you can always go out and get it more details about these points. Any information can be added later too. For example, I'm not putting in if this is a raise or a lower curb. If this happens to be the block that you live on in this, you can always come back into OpenStreetMap and add that information. That's one thing that's really helpful is contributing that local knowledge uh, to your neighborhood because um, there's millions of OpenStreetMap contributors around the world. I can only contribute to New York City as much as I see on the imagery here. I don't have that local knowledge that most of you will likely have. All right, lots of errors, attempting to upload. Oh no, oh, line has no descriptive tags. That's the case. Just make sure that all of your crossings here actually have the, you've clicked on it and you've added if it's a marked or an unmarked crosswalk. If you have to go, you that's no problem. You can come back to this later. The tasks are left open or locked for two hours, as you can see here. So you can always come back to it. Sometimes if you're unsure what the error is and you've checked all of your crosswalks to make sure that they are marked, you might just have to select another task without uploading the changes. Hopefully um, you haven't done too many changes and someone else can come back and figure out what's going on in that square at a later time. 
Interesting. Okay. This happens every once in a while. I love when these things happen when I'm live demoing. When I clicked on my square, it actually, for some reason or another, didn't take me exactly to where I needed it to be. Always make sure you have that pink square around. As you can see, it's all the way up here. I don't know why that happened. You can always hit select another task if that causes you problems. This is like what we were showing earlier. If this is too much, you don't want to deal with it, you can always just meet, leave your task unmapped. There's a few things that we can do here. Really what we're going to do is on these medians, we're going to mark those as footways. So what this will end up looking is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different lines. This is when the mapping gets really fun. We'll do it from one direction to the other and try to keep it in the, in the center here. I'm going to do one line, double click, and then do this as a marked crosswalk. And then it's really interesting because even though you have all these different roads coming through here, they're not quite mapped. They could be in an OSM. They're just mapped to that level of detail currently. Theoretically, someone would put a, a crossing here as well. Actually, let me do that really quick. That's actually going to be helpful for someone navigating this space. The line here. <laughs> it looks like a crazy road to cross, let alone map. <laughs> Usually good indication, if it's, if it's complicated to map, then I can't imagine what it's like to actually cross it. Okay, it's giving me an error here that it's close to Foster, not connected. That should go away once we actually get this whole line done. So we'll I will connect here and then escape. And I'm gonna wrap it up after I, I demonstrate the plants. Don't worry, I will come back later for those curve lines. I just wanted to demonstrate what to do here. And like I said, I would leave in this kind of case, I would leave the note in the comments, just sending, just asking a reviewer um, to go through it again. That's essentially what you're going to do is do that all the way across. Fun to map and sounds like fun to um, actually cross as well. So it's fun that you, you're mapping an area you walked through the other day. I'm going to leave this here. Please make sure as we wrap up that you do hit save. I'm going to be a little irresponsible right now and step away from my screen, but please save, upload, and then indicate if your project has been completely mapped. You're welcome to keep mapping as long as you want. If you want to map all night, go for it. We'll also have another session tomorrow. I'm going to jump over to my slides here. We'll have another session tomorrow, like I said, that will basically be going over the same thing. If you just want to hang out and map with Steven, you might have some better insight than I do. That'll be the same project and everything. They'll just give you a chance to help complete this part of the pedestrian network. Yep, I'll drop the slides in there again. All of the links I've shared should be in the slide deck as well. And feel free to con contact me. Highly recommend joining our Slack channel, um, our Slack workspace. Lots of great ways to connect with our wider community as well as local New York mappers or wherever else you're coming calling in from. Thank you everyone, especially if you've uh, sat through the whole 90 minutes and mapped alongside me. So thank you so much.